Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing our little sidebar examination of Elijah. <clears throat> Again, remember why we're looking at this? Because we were finishing up James and we saw where James gave Elijah as an example of someone who was a righteous man who did a who availeth much in prayer, okay? But he was a man just like us. He was described as a man like us. And when you go and read the account of what happened with Elijah, it's absolutely amazing. And so we're in the midst of the uh, uh, standoff between uh, King Ahab and Elijah. Remember, Elijah told him, it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. Hadn't rained for three and a half years. And so now Elijah tells uh, Ahab to bring uh, the false prophets together, the 400 prophets of Baal and the 400 uh, prophets of Asherah. They come together at Mount Carmel. And we saw in the last episode that the prophets of Baal, Baal, that they did their thing. Elijah said, go up there, man, take one of those oxen, offer it before your God, call upon him, and uh, let's see what happens. Whichever God brings down fire from heaven and consumes it, that's the one who's the most high God. So they did. They prepared it. They did their things. They leaped about the altar. They cut themselves where blood was flowing. They cried out with a loud voice. Well, nothing was happening. Elijah just mocked him. And he says, hey, um, maybe you need to call out louder. Maybe he's uh, occupied, okay? And that, that word actually gives the idea that maybe he's in the bathroom. Maybe he's gone off on a journey. Maybe he's on holiday, right? Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he needs to be awakened. And so Elijah's just mocking them over this God that is doing nothing. And so in verse 29, we saw it said, when midday was past, they raved until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. So they raved all afternoon, but there was no voice. No one answered and no one paid attention. <laughs> Isn't that great? I guess I love the way the Lord will emphasize this thing. And no, no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. Then verse 30, then Elijah said to the people, come near to me. Now, remember, he had called for the people to come, and the people had come. So they're seeing this whole thing going on with all these uh, prophets of Baal and the, and the prophets of Ashtoreth. And so he, Elijah says, come here. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord, <clears throat> which had been torn down. So apparently there was an altar of the Lord here at this place. He repairs the altar. Verse 31, Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. So this is the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember, uh, Israel's original name was Jacob. Jacob means supplanter, deceiver. Israel means uh, one who strives with God. <clears throat> well, that sort of makes some sense, doesn't it? Particularly when you understand the account of what happened that uh, Jacob had actually st striven with God, had strived with God. Then verse 32 says this. So with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Okay, in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> so Elijah was doing all of this by the word of the Lord at the behest of the Lord. And now he's building an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two measures of seed. Okay, two measures of seed. Uh, that's a seah of seed, a third of an ephah of seed. I don't know how much that is. Let me glance through my little resources right here. Six point, uh, uh, one was equal to 6.6 .6 quarts. Okay, and so let's say 14 to 15 quarts of seed. Now, this is sort of interesting, large enough to hold that. Verse 33, then he arranged the wood and he cut the oxen in pieces and laid it on the wood. And now, now, this is a, a very graphic thing. This is a very organic thing. This is a very labor-intensive thing. We see this happening throughout Scripture. We see where God uh, told Abraham to do this, and he offered a sacrifice a couple times, as a matter of fact. We see here with Elijah. So this just isn't something you go out there with your pen knife and do. You know, this is something that required time, this is something that required energy, often would have required help, right? So he arranges the wood, gets ready for a sacrifice, for fire to come down, <laughs> okay? So he puts fire on it. He cut the oxen in pieces, and he laid it on the woods. 
on the wood, verse 34. And he said, fill four pitchers with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And he said, do it a second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it the third time. And the water flowed around the altar. And he also filled the trench with water. Now, remember the situation. Remember the circumstance. They were having an extreme drought. There had been no rain and no dew for three and a half years. Either one. So many parallels. And we start thinking, what else happened for three and a half years related to that? Oh, yeah, Jesus was here in bodily form for three and a half years, the living water himself. So do you think that water was of value at that time? Well, of course it was. Remember, Ahab had sent Obadiah out, and the two of them are going out just to try to find some green grass and a spring that still had water in it. And here, Elijah is telling him to offer four pitchers three times. <laughs> How much is that? Well, 12, right? A pitcher maybe for each one of the tribes of Israel. So they, they poured this on top of the burnt offering and on the wood. Now, remember what the deal was here. Remember what Elijah had proposed, which Ahab had agreed to. And again, this came from God, <clears throat> that we're going to do this, and we're going to call upon each one of our gods, and whoever's God brings forth fire from heaven <clears throat> and consumes the offering, that is the most high God. And so Elijah was doing it to where this wasn't going to be uh, just fire from heaven upon a dry offering. He's pouring water all over the offering, but he's also offering that water as an offering. And the water flowed around the altar, and it also filled the trench with water. And so it was contained all around this thing. Verse 36, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant, and I have done all these things at your word. Well, there you go. We see that he's done all these things at the word and at the behest of the Lord. He continues, answer me, O Lord, answer me that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their heart back again. He was already telling them and already prophesying over them that this was about to happen. And when this happened, that their heart was going to turn to the Lord because of what they're about to see. But he wanted them to know from the get-go that their heart wasn't turning by any initiation of their own. Their heart wasn't turning because they saw a particular thing or they were amazed by an event. Their heart was being turned by the Lord himself. That's a biggie right there, okay? So my time's flying by real quick. Let me just read these last two, uh, three verses, and maybe we'll come back and examine them next time. Then the fire of the Lord fell down and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. It consumed everything. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. To which I say, you reckon? Verse 40, Then Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. He killed every one of them. You're going to find out in later that that really hacked Jezebel off. Folks, this is the Lord who we serve. This is the Lord who has turned our hearts. I tell you what, go back and read this. This is 1 I mean, Kings 18. I think there's more for us here. We'll talk about it next time. Again, I'm Dale. I'll see you then. Goodbye.